Hey everyone, Chuck Crosswhite here with The Beat, and for this tutorial, I'm gonna cover the six essential camera basics I feel like every up and coming filmmaker should know. Aperture, shutter speed, frame rate, ISO, depth of field, slow motion. And so by doing this, I wanted to do it as concisely and as easy to understand as possible, and hopefully kind of quickly to cover six topics. Um, but we do have a nice thing to go along with this, something to help you remember these things. We have a freebie luggage tag that we're actually going to be able to give you and something to keep with you, tie to your gear. You're always going to have it. It's going to be a great reference tool. Let's get this thing started. Let's go! The first thing in our list is aperture, which is the opening in your lens that allows light to pass through. The best real life example for this is actually the human eye and the way that the pupil will enlarge or shrink based on the brightness of your surroundings. This is actually the most effective and the most common way to change the brightness or exposure of your footage. The way your aperture is measured is in something called focal stops or f-stops. F-stops kind of run in a, a tricky, illogical way where the lower the F-stop, the more open your um, aperture is going to be and the more light is going to be let into your lens, thus causing a brighter image. But something that's important that comes along with that is something called depth of field. Now, depth of field is the area of focus around your subject that is still in focus. I'm going to go to some footage I shot of two clone chucks talking about depth of field and I think that might give us a better example. Let's go. Whenever your subject is actually in focus, but everything in the background is blurred out, this is called having a shallow depth of field. And the way you achieve this is by having a wide open aperture. Right now, I'm shooting in an F 1.2. I'm all the way open on my lens. And so it's giving me this nice aesthetic quality of having all the attention on the subject while the information that's going on in the background is out of focus. If you go the opposite direction with your aperture and you, you actually close it down, right now I'm actually at a 10.4 in my shot, it allows you to get detail further and further back into your framing. And so if you look in the background right now, as opposed to my other clone, you can see more details in the trees and everything back there. This is a great method of using your aperture for things like landscapes, or let's say you have a group photo where your subjects go back in a, in a line. So ways to play with your aperture, your depth of field, all of it affects each other and there's different things that give you tools as a filmmaker. Another quick thing to note about depth of field is that when you have a shallow depth of field it's going to affect the way lights in your shot look in the blurry background. So whenever you have lights going off in that shallow depth of field shot they're going to look larger, they're going to have a greater glow and this look is called bokeh which is a really nice appealing cinematic aesthetic that could bring a lot to your shoots if you decide to use it. Also, I had a, a user comment on one of my videos. It was Mastering Manual Focus, which you can find right here. And it was uh, Eric Xavier, and he asked me about how to get rid of flat images. Well, one of the best things that you can do is use a backlight, and the other great thing that you can do is use a shallow depth of field. And so what that does, like I said, brings all the attention to your subject, makes the background look blurry, and really brings the subject away from the background, thus eliminating the flat image. Hope that helped, Eric. A great way to maintain the exposure you're looking for is by using your ISO. Let's change locations real quick so we can go talk about ISO. As we go up in ISO, what we're doing is we're going to be applying more of an electrical charge to your footage. It's going to make your your footage more sensitive to light. This goes without saying that you should be careful when you're going high with your ISO. Cameras these days have gotten a lot better at handling higher ISOs, but if you go beyond a certain level, you're gonna to start to notice grain noise in your footage. So real quick, let me walk you through some different ISOs so I can show you um, how raising your ISO is going to affect your overall footage. Okay, this is me here with a 1250 ISO. I was originally at 400. We're still good here. Um, footage looks clean, and so no problems here. But let's keep going further. And here I am at 5000 ISO. 
Like I said, cameras are getting better and better at handling the higher ISOs and eliminating some of that noise and grain that used to be so rampant even when we went to 1200 like I just showed you before. But now at 5000, you're starting to see some, some of the grain and noise, especially in the black, like of this lens or in the poster behind me or of the base cases in the back corner, All right? But let's keep on going. Now we're at ISO 10,000 and you can see the noise, the grain everywhere. You could even see it in my hair. And so I don't know when you would ever wanna crank your ISO up to 10,000, but who knows, the situation may uh, arise where you have little to no light. But just so you realize how ISO can affect your footage and this grain, this noise, I really wanted you to see it. But with that being said, let's head on to our next topic. Let's go. So here we are back on the couch and the next things that we're gonna talk about are shutter speed and frame rate. Now with shutter speed, it's basically controlling how much blur your footage is gonna have. Um, it's how long each frame is exposed to light. With a higher shutter speed, you're going to have a crisper image. This is good for fight scenes and action films. Now, when we use a lower shutter speed, this is going to maintain that blur in your footage which is actually how it's going to look more natural to your audience. Up next, we have frame rate. Now, frame rate is how many frames per second your camera is shooting. Our standard in the cinematic world is 23.98 frames per second, or 24 frames per second, also known as 24p. Uh, some other ones to know are 25 frame, frames per second, or 30 frames per second, which is the broadcast standard for news and most commonly used in sports. A great rule of thumb for your shutter speed and how it correlates to your frame rate is called the 180 degree rule. Now basically this means that whatever your frame rate is set at, your shutter speed should be double that number. So let's say you're at 24p, well your shutter speed should be at 48, or if your camera doesn't have that, it should be at 50. Now, if you're shooting at 30 frames per second or 30p, then your shutter speed should be at 60. And this is going to maintain that natural feeling, that, that blur that's going to make your footage um, feel... It's just gonna look right to your audience. It's not gonna look strange as if you were using a shutter speed that wasn't within that 180 degree rule. So to help you visualize these things that I'm talking about and to give you an example, I've invited out my fellow contributor, John Rodriguez, and he did an incredible video you can find right here about expression loop outs. Um, but we went to a tennis court and I had him do a bunch of jumping jacks. And so let's check it out. Here we have John, our fitness guru, in 24 frames per second at a shutter speed of 50. These are the standard cinema settings and it has that nice blur that we become accustomed to that we see so often in film. Now we're gonna double it and we have John still in 24p but at a shutter speed of 100. And notice how we're gonna start to lose some of that blur. We're gonna see a crisper image, we're gonna see more detail. Double the shutter speed to 200 now and even less blur, but we do have a very sharp image. This is a good look for, like I said, anything with high action in it. Now we took the shutter speed all the way up to 2000 just to show you how unnatural and alien the footage feels. With the shutter speed this high, we could actually freeze the frame anywhere in this footage that we wanted and we would have a perfectly in focus still of John. <laughs> John, you all right? Screw you, Chuck. Now let's move on to slow motion. Slow. So when we take our frame rate past 24 or 30 frames per second, it starts unlocking the ability for slow motion. Right now I'm at 48 frames per second, so a one second clip in 24p is now actually a two second clip. And now here we are at 60 frames per second in 24p, which would take a one second clip and make it a 2.5 second clip. Thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. Please like, subscribe, comment. I'll try and address your questions. 
maybe leave some suggestions of what you might like to see me cover next time. But for right now, that does it for me. I'm out.